Did you hear that? I've got a really noisy neighbour at the moment. He's loving his big engine. Clearly compensating. This is Sheer Isolation. It's presented by Kieran Moore in Trowbridge and John Ponting in Cricklade. And I'm going to have to start straight away by correcting my pre-recorded self there. There is no Kieran Moore in Trowbridge this week. It is just me, John Ponting, in Cricklade. Hello. Thank you for joining us on sh- us. Thank you for joining me on Sheer Isolation. It's going to be very weird without Kieran this week, but he will be back next week. And it's also very weird talking to myself on Zoom and not having anybody to 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 interact with. This is probably one of those first signs of madness, talking to yourself, but uh, I'll roll with it. I'm comfortable with this. So, yeah, you are listening to Sheer Isolation. We are promoting, I've said it again, I'm not going to correct myself. We are promoting the local music scene across the West of England. We do that every week by playing new tunes from from local artists, by uh, interviewing people from from the arts and music sector. Um, That's all as normal this week. Our guest this week is Tom Haynes. Now, Tom is a Swindon based musician. There's quite a lot of uh, experimental synth sampling. It, it's definitely something a bit different. It's not unpleasant, but it's, it's certainly not the mainstream. Um, as well as being a musician, he also has several um, other jobs and hobbies, such as creating miniature models of things, anything from trains to spaceships. He's also an ecologist, and he also makes a cameo appearance on the new Jeremy Clarkson series on Amazon Prime, Clarkson's Farm, through his work as an ecologist. So uh, we, we talked to him about how he was telling Jeremy Clarkson off for wanting to but a pond where a pond shouldn't be. But uh, even though Kieran is not with us uh, this week, he has given me a couple of bits he wanted me to talk about because he's got a couple of uh, events he's been pushing. Both of these are down at the Cheese and Grain in Froome uh, and they're coming up in a couple of weeks. So he just wanted to uh, have a little bit of a shout out. And um, because he's not here, I I said I'd try and fill the gap. Although you know that I am not the salesman of the two of us. I'm far too straight laced. So I'm not really going to be promoting it with, with Kieran's flair and his... And, and his passion and, and the fact that he can talk about some he can talk about anything for 10 minutes the amount of stuff i have to edit out to make this fit into a half hour show you would not believe but anyway i would do my best so what's coming up at the cheese and grain in Froome on saturday the 26th we have got get get cape where cape fly so get cape is um or, or also known as sam to, to a lot of people sam duckworth he's probably kind of sits in the the singer songwriter but quite indie and quite rocky at the same time uh, category so he is playing at the cheese and grain as i mentioned with some special guests I'm not sure who is who's uh playing alongside him there but that's happening on saturday the 26th and then a day later on the 27th uh same same venue we've got blackwater county now blackwater county they're um they're based down in devon they're a uh, five or six piece i'm not sure um exactly but there's, there's a healthy crowd of them and uh they play folk rock but they've got quite a celtic uh, traditional feel to them so that's happening at at Cheese and Grain, and uh, they've got support from the Lost Trades, who we have featured and talked about on this show uh, before. That this is a Wiltshire supergroup trio made up of uh, Phil Cooper, Jamie Hawkins, and uh, Tamsin Quinn. So three uh, brilliant musicians in their own right work together as the Lost Trades. So that's happening on Sunday, twenty seventh. Now, despite um, all the social distancing and government guidelines, for people who don't know the the Cheese and Grain. It is um, kind of a warehouse size venue. They've got a massive room and they're not going to be at full capacity because of the restrictions, but they do have a healthy amount of space. It will all be um, uh, as safe as it needs to be. They've got a big stage there um, and it's, it's a really nice place to get to. So if, you, if you're down that way over that weekend, there is some fantastic music to be found. So for the first uh, of our two tracks for today's show, we are going to play a tune from Get Cape Where Cape Fly. This is uh, uh, from a year or two ago. It's not a brand new track, but uh, it's a lovely track nonetheless. And this one is called The Unconventionals.
is by Get Cape, Wear Cape, Fly, and it is called The Unconventionals, and you can catch Sam playing down at the Cheese and Grain Infirm later this month, or you can check out online. I'm sure he's got some other events coming up uh, across the area um, in socially safe venues. So you are listening to Sheer Isolation with me, John. Um, I'm without my Kieran today, so I am doing a lot, trying to do a lot more talking, um, and I'm, I'm kind of missing being interrupted every second sentence because um, that's, I, I tend to say a sentence and a half knowing full well that Kieran will then take over. I'm having to fill in the rest of my paragraphs, which is um, very, very difficult for me to do, but I, th I think it's going okay so far. So we have got um, a brilliant interview coming up next with a local musician called Tom Haynes. Now I've, uh, I've known Tom for, for several years and uh, as well as being a musician, he also has a few other bits that he does with his, with his life and one of them being uh, ecology. And through his ecology work, he was invited to Jeremy Clarkson's farm up in um, Chipping Norton, uh, which then ended up being part of uh, Jeremy Clarkson's new Amazon Prime show, which is called Clarkson's Farm, where he's taken over the, the farm and he's trying to run it himself. Uh, but, but aside from that, as I say, Tom is also a really good musician and he pulls together a lot of sampling work from, from where, when he's doing his uh, ecology work, take a microphone with him, sample birds, sam sample rivers, sample whatever's going by. Uh, and makes that into uh, makes that into some tracks. So really nice to have a chat to him. I've never really sat down and had a proper proper uh, chat to Tom. So it's been really lovely to have a uh, to talk to him. And uh, here's what he had to say. Let's start with the music element of what you do because you're, you're based in Swindon and you 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 are a musician and I I know you through music. Um, I, I suppose I would describe your music as, I mean, you put samples in, there's a lot of synth in a way, it's kind of experimental. I don't know if you'd define yourself that way. 
I'd say experimental, occasionally acoustic, a little bit of predictable. That's probably how it goes. You are quite a familiar face on, on the pub scene there. So obviously you've not been able to, to go out and about doing your music. Does that mean you've been doing stuff at home? I remember at the start of, I think it was lockdown one, you were posting a heck of a lot of videos. What was that about? Yeah, so yeah, just before all the pandemic stuff kicked off, I was doing something called January, which I think is something organised by an electronic musician on YouTube called Cuckoo. And um, and it's basically that you try and do like a jam session every day of January. Um, so I, I kind of set up to do that. And I it's really funny, actually, how that worked out, because I ended up trying to collaborate with as many of my friends as I could each of those days. And I played in random places, like on top of mountains and stuff, and uh, uh, Albert Docks in Liverpool. And and then the world closed in after that. <laughs> it was as if I was saying, hi, everybody, I'm not going to see you for 12 months. <laughs> So I remember, I say, I remember seeing all the videos there, and I was, and I was, I, I wondered whether that was to do in lockdown, but it was completely separate. Yeah, no, it was completely separate. I really enjoyed it. It was really exhausting, um, but it was really fun. Like I think one of the the highlights for me was doing a weird little rave in front of a windmill at oh, where was it? At the Manchester Shipping Canal. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my badger and my wolf hat on. Really random. Were, were these um? pre-organized venues or did you just pick a random town and just rock up to it um they, they were like things like i was kind of doing at the time and i just kind of like segued into doing the music around so i was on my way to liverpool so i did a sequence around liverpool and then i was on my way to the lake district just for a couple of days break so i did some around there uh, and yeah stuff like that and and then just I, I also did like um this this uh this jam track where i had a mic in the, on a rotating table and I set up amps and effects pedals all the way around it and it just spun round <laughs> while I played different things that's quite a weird one as well um so yeah that, that, that's probably the more extreme experimental end um of my stuff um where I can be a bit more easy listening as well <laughs> some of the stuff you do is completely mental to be honest but I do love it <laughs> Um, I, I see in the background there, you've, you've also got your, your badger and your, your hat. Do you want to kind of explain? Because when, when you perform, they are always with you. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I've got the, the wolf hat and, and Bristol. So, it is, so here's Bristol the badger. Um, so, yeah, he, he's kind of fairly key in, in grasslands, um, along with the wolf hat as well. Um, stay, Bristol. No, he's going. No, all right, I'll leave him here. He can just stay. Um, yeah, so Bristol comes to all the gigs. Uh, and wolf hat. I, I think for the most part with grasslands, I've always, always got the wolf hat on now. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> it's your thing. <laughs> what, what's, what's quite helpful is that when I'm using synths, if I'm looking down, the wolf hat kind of looks out at everybody. So it usually it works quite well because if I'm concentrating on whatever device I'm using, it just looks like it's looking at everyone. So that that's quite cool. <laughs> and probably slightly freaky as well. So <laughs> yeah, it's a bit weird. When you are performing live, you've got your synth and you've got a few other little devices around you. Are they sampling loops? Are they pedals? What are you actually playing with when you're live? Yeah, so so for the for the first EP, uh, for the first LP I did, I tend to have an acoustic guitar and various kind of effects pedals that, that goes into. And I've got um, two chord boxes. I've got a Chaos Pad, which is a sampler, and then I've got a synth one. And I tend to bring uh, my my Mini Nova synth that's over there. And the DJ deck as well, and the DJ deck tends to run a lot of the samples, and then they get resampled through the cool box. Um, but then I, I change it around a lot. Like I'm starting to play um, like a little OP one quite often these days as well. Um, people keep telling me to like streamline my setup, but it's just fun bringing it all. Um, can I play that synth with my nose while I'm playing the guitar? Like I like stuff like that. It just it just keeps me entertained. <laughs> I did um I did an installation for uh, Charlie Miles for one of his sets in Swindon where I just did a a set of uh, t train noises diesel hydraulic noises that were made in Swindon trains um, and I just had their engines going through effects boxes <laughs> that's quite fun <laughs> that um, that does bring me on to something else I was going to talk to you about which is your model making um, you don't just do trains do you I've seen some sci-fi stuff as well but is, is that a, a hobby or is it because the, the stuff you make is really exquisite it's really detailed oh thank you um yeah so I, I do a few commissions as well um like I, I did uh I, I built like a what would you say like a studio kind of size and detailed Thunderbird 3 uh for someone not long ago um and I'm building 
a train for for another kind of friend of mine that's um, got like an exhibition layout with, similar to mine, which is like a, a brewery setup. So, so yeah, I, I do them for my own entertainment primarily, but I occasionally take on commissions, um, but they take forever to do. <laughs> so they're not that cost effective. So if I'm really into it, I'll do it. But it's yeah, it's it's the labour of love though. <laughs> So do, do you um do you mix the, the different categories? Do you have your your spaceships flying around your train sets? Well, actually, it gets more confusing than that. What what tends to happen is there's occasionally people making say model railways. They tend to use things like mosses to detail their models, and then that messes with my head because then I'm looking at a model and I'm identifying the mosses, and I'm going, no, I can't, I can't cope with that. It should that shouldn't be happening. A moss shouldn't be that big. Um, but yeah, there's a bit of occasions where they've crossed, but actually I think more, it's probably that the music will cross with the models a bit because that's actually quite fun because um, you could do cool little music videos with them and stuff like that. And so that's kind of something I'm thinking about at the moment. <laughs> okay. So you, you are excellent at segueing between the different questions and things I was going to cover because you mentioned about moss and, and you get distracted by moss because your, your kind of your grown up job is uh, ecology, isn't it? So you're, you're a fully trained ecologist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the actual job um, is, is yeah, like uh, plants, uh, wildlife management and kind of all the legal stuff around that. Yeah. Uh, are you able to kind of forage and pick out what's edible and what's not and what to leave alone? Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like I, I don't tend to do it too much. Like I've started doing it a bit more with mushrooms um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, I, I can I can generally kind of guide people away from the things that are going to kill them and, and the things that they can have, have an eat of. And my, my thing is more kind of meadow systems and, and, and kind of grasses. That's why the, the grassland connection with the band, really. So like a, my kind of thing is um, identifying different grasses in, in meadow systems and um, salt marshes as well, actually. Like I spent a lot of time in Scotland um, mapping out all, all of their salt marshes in Scotland. I spent three years doing it, just walking around the Scottish coast mapping all their salt marshes. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> that was fun. That was a big commission, a three-year job just to walk around the Scottish coastline. Yeah, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was just in the in the um in the in the financial recession, I think. I just managed to get that job and keep myself an employee walking around Scotland. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I suppose for on your music side as well, you're able to integrate by because you do a lot of sampling, don't you? So do you wander around with your microphone sometimes while while you're working, just with the microphone on your back, just sampling? Oh yeah. Else? Yeah, I've yeah, like I've got um yeah, I've got like a, a quite a nice library of kind of field recordings. I'm getting more into it now as well. Like I'm trying to mix a bit more, trying to get the the idea of a habitat in the background of a soundscape. So some of my recent music's been effectively me jamming on on portable synthesizers in some of my favourite habitats, and I've got like a, a sequence of like salt marsh kind of recordings on on different sites, and I'm just playing synth there with the background sounds of the salt marsh. Mm. Did a marine cliff one not long ago in Cornwall as well. I'm quite enjoying doing that. Um, so that's quite fun. It's, it sounds wonderful and peaceful, although I'm not sure if it would be peaceful by the time you've run it through the sampler a hundred of times, but you never know. They're mostly ambient, so they are fairly chilled, those ones. But I, I, I kind of want to get this into like a gig state, I guess. So I just end up doing gigs in random fields. So that's, that's the dream. And I can pretty much do it. <laughs> it's just, you know, is anyone going to turn up or do I do for the cows? I guess I could do it for the cows. <laughs> Apparently cows do like chilled music, makes them uh, make, make some calmer, but I don't know if that's true. But I, I did try it. I, I tried it in Cornwall playing a, a gig to some cows, but I, I kind of miss I, I kind of misread it, I guess, because all the cows came over and started trying to lick the microphone and, and my badger. They tried to take my badger off me. There's, <laughs> there's video footage of this. And and then a bull turned up and then I had to change fields because it all got really out of hand. And then I started to <laughs> kill all the cows. So need to rethink that. You can draw so many comparisons to a real life festival gig, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I want also want to move on, just staying on the ecology. One of your more recent um, commissions uh, got you into a, an Amazon Prime series, which is Clarkson's Farm, which was just released a couple of weeks ago. And you're you're kind of one of the one of the, the uh, you have a nice cameo appearance uh, talking about ecology. So do you want to tell us about that and just how it happened? Yeah, so so that I, I was working at a uh, an ecological, well, an environmental consultancy called Lockhart Garrett in Chipping Norton, and and yeah, Jeremy Clarkson's farm's like about three minutes away from that office, and uh, like I, I was in charge of the you know sorting out all of the different ecology projects, 
And yeah, and his, his TV producer just kind of contacted us and just asked if we could give him a bit of a hand with a project around this this kind of pond that he wanted to sort out and put on his land. And he was a bit worried about some of the wildlife in the valley. So I, I was kind of in, in the show basically doing some of the surveys on his farm. Uh, I did loads of filming for the show um, and they've only used like a, a small sequence near the end of, of my run where we kind of found some kind of evidence of, uh, sort of water voles in the valley, basically. And, and we have a bit of a, I have a bit of a firm discussion with him about water voles, um, which was firm than I remember it being actually, but uh, but there we go. Um, but it was really good. Like he's quite an uh, informed guy on wildlife matters, actually, like despite uh, how he kind of comes across. Like he, he's got some lovely wildflower meadows on his farm. Uh, yeah. Really nice. Let, let's just finish off then by um, talking about your upcoming uh, LP, I think, is it? No, your upcoming EP. Uh, yeah, so so yeah, the, the next thing I'm working on is um, is an LP called U Logistics, um, which I'm hoping to finish this year. Uh, so, it's, so it's like a direct follow-up to my last one, which was Flames, Doorways, Grass and Time. So, you know, I'm, I'm kind of hoping to finish that off. Done a few songs on it so far, released a couple. It's a bit kind of glitch poppy, I guess, as kind of the, the background for it. And there's a lot of synths in there. And it's it's a bit about eco kind of anxiety, really, is that is the main kind of driver of it, to be honest. Wonderful. Well, you've, you've picked one of the tracks uh, uh, from it, haven't you? So do you want to tell us a bit about this one? Yeah, so so um, so I've picked Simulating Lately. Um, so that is, yeah, yeah a, a song kind of about the futile nature of some of these things and kind of how how we can kind of set the clock back or if it's even worth setting the clock back to be honest and uh, you know it's it's kind of looking at maybe it's better just to look at things in this in, in this reconstructed way that we've modified the environment really and uh you know looking ahead rather than back i guess <laughs> wonderful <laughs> um if people want to find out a bit more about you where have you got a website that people can wander over yeah to? cool so so like um like my instagram feeds where I probably post my most nonsense. Uh, I've got like a, a Bandcamp kind of website for my music kind of grasslands um, uh, dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, I think most of my ramblings about research and and the environment they're still on my Instagram anyway. Um, so yeah, probably best to go those two places, I guess.
That tune is called Simulating Lately. It is by Grasslands, um, aka Tom, who we were just talking to there. Tom and his badger, which goes to every gig with him. It's not a real badger for those of you who are joining us on the radio feed. It is a it's a, it's a toy. It's a badger toy. And he's also got his wolf hat as well, as he was explaining, which um, that, that, that's his look. If, if there's a badger and, and a, a wolf hat, then you're watching Tom and you're watching Grasslands. Uh, right. You are with us on Sheer Isolation. It is that time of the show where we look at the latest news and see what's been happening in the world. Now, by the time we record this and by the time it gets aired, we tend to miss out the government's uh, announcement. So I'm appreciating that we are a week behind by saying about this four week delay. We were expecting um, that that's, uh, by now we would be out of all restrictions. Obviously, that's not happened. We've now got to wait four weeks. So the, the, this this does give cause issues for certain people. Now, a couple of months ago on Sheer Isolation, we were talking to Rich Swatton, who is uh, the man behind the Mindy Festival. And uh, that is due to happen in, in the next couple of weeks. As, as I was putting together this podcast, news reached us that the Mindy Festival had just announced that they are unfortunately having to cancel this year's event. Now, one of our uh, biggest festivals in the region is WOMAD, which takes place at Charlton Park in, in Malmesbury. Um, and that, this brings together a lot of world music. Now, I've been keeping an eye on this one because we, we know that um, travel restrictions between countries is, is very iffy at the moment. And when you're running a festival that relies on a lot of international music, that makes it very tricky. And, and we, we know that 2000 Trees, which was, was expecting to bring a lot of American headliners, that, that was one of their big concerns. And, and eventually they, they've had to plow out for another year. Um, but yeah, WOMAD. So that is um, uh, one of the guys right at the top of that is the Peter Gabriel. Um, who was uh, well, uh, founded WOMAD uh, back in years gone by. So he has um, put, a, put a statement out saying that although they haven't cancelled WOMAD yet, it's, it's, it's not looking great, to be honest, uh, unless the government can... We're, we're going back to this idea of um, uh, the, this problem of the government not uh, underwriting insurance for festivals. So if a festival does have to cancel, then, then who picks up the bills at the last minute? Um, the government's not committing to that, and so... The, the lesser of the two evils then for people who run festivals is just to, to call the whole thing off. Now, the problem with uh, with WOMAD is that the, the date of it is, I think it's the 22nd, 23rd of July. It's, it's literally like three days after the, the, the new date of returning to normal. So it, it's really, really close, really squeaky bum time, whether that will be able to, to happen or not. And as I say, uh, without some kind of reassurance from the government, they're, they're not sure that uh, WOMAD is going to go ahead. This will be a shame, not just for those people who want to go to the festival and, and who like festivals, but the, if we take WOMAD as a good example, that's around 40,000 people who um, who spend the weekend just on the outskirts of Malmesbury. And a lot of those do go into the town and explore and, and learn about the history and use the cafes and use the facilities and, and use the local shops. So it's it's not just about the festival. When when these big events cancel, the, the whole community that surrounds it feels, feels the pinch. It, it doesn't just dent the music. It doesn't just dent the, the traders on site. It, it has a much wider wider impact. So we'll keep an eye on that one. And it would be lovely um, if, if we're mad and some of these big festivals can go ahead at some point later this summer. OK, if you want to get in touch with this show, you can do. Our email address is sheerisolation at gmail.com. That is sheer with two E's. We, we are online. We're on video format, audio format and in radio format as well. We are gradually working our way to world domination. I'm going to have to wrap this up now. So thank you for listening uh, to me. Uh, on sheer isolation we will be back i will be back with kieran next week uh, with more tunes more guests and um more nonsense hopefully cheers for listening thanks bye bye now <laughs>